The following story is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. I met my wife five years ago. We dated for a few years, and I didn't really have much of a family. So her parents took me in, and we were married three years after. They had a very large farm and acres of land in North Indiana. Her family even let us live in a small property close to the main farmhouse. There was a part of the property that was heavily restricted, and whenever I had asked about it or brought it up to my wife, she said it was only there because they ran their meat distribution business. We couldn't really go on it because of liability reasons for their company, and only the family members were allowed up there. She insisted that it was liability reasons as to why I couldn't go there, and I respected that. But after a while, I got a little... curious. Throughout the week, I would notice vehicles going up and down the road, throughout the farm, into this part of the property, throughout the week. Interestingly enough, sometimes I wouldn't see cars come back away from the part of the property. So they would just go there, and they would never come back. This grew my curiosity even more. So about three to four weeks ago, I decided that I would drive up there myself and find some sort of excuse to get access. This is where the turning point began for everything that I have been told. I got in the car and drove towards the gate. As I got closer, there was a rough, large, and mean looking bearded man stepped out of a shed that was next to the gate. He was quick to say, You shouldn't be here. Go back to the farm. I told him that I needed to go see my father, and it was something urgent that I needed to talk to him about. He abruptly said, I'll let him know. And then he sent me on my way. I turned the car around and drove down the road, away from the gate. I quickly noticed there was a track that led away from the farm on the other side. It had never been mentioned, and I've never seen it before, but later that night, my wife said that her father was angry that I came up to that part of the farm, and I should never go back up there ever again. I asked her, what's the big deal? I used to work around dangerous and heavy machinery every single day, and she just looked at me with a blank expression and said, just drop it. At that point, I knew this family is hiding something from me. With me being me, I couldn't just drop it. It's all I could think about, all day and night, and it started to bother me during work. My first thought was that they were an organized crime family, but surely I would have noticed something like this. Unfortunately, the truth was far worse than I could have ever imagined. Three days ago, I decided to make a decision to find out what was happening there, so I woke up at three in the morning, and I quietly left the house. I got into my car and turned it on. I was thinking of a game plan of how I was going to do this. While I was still close to the farm, I turned my headlights off and drove around the property. Once it was okay for me to turn on the headlights, I turned them on and began exploring. My curiosity was killing me, so I had to, that's what was pushing me to do this. I pulled up nearby the track that I saw earlier, and I started walking down the side of the track. I got about halfway down the track, and it slowly began to turn into a trail. I had a flashlight in my hand, and I tried to draw as least amount of attention to me as possible. It felt impossible with how loud my footsteps were. I remember my heart stopping when I saw headlights in front of me. I scampered into the overgrown bushes that lined the route, turning off my light, and I slid down. I allowed the truck to pass in front of me, and I noticed this was an official company vehicle, escorted by an armored vehicle. At this point, I was extremely anxious about what I was getting myself into. Once they had slowly passed by me, I got back up, waited for them to clear the path and I continued down the trail. As I continued walking, a small shed with a barrier became very visible up front. I 
continued walking towards it, and it looked like some guard shack that somebody would be sitting inside. I managed to navigate a small gap under the surrounding fence, and uh, I was able to get past it without the same confrontation as before. So I made my way underneath and got past the barrier. From here there was a big yard that was lit by multiple floodlights and I can hear muffled talking from all around me from each angle. I then realized that there were two giant barns and three smaller cabins to the right. That's where the talking was coming from. There was another cabin to the left, but that one had no lights on. I thought to myself this smaller cabin at the end would be a really good place to go to see if there was a way in. I needed to at least see what was going on here. As I made my way, there were three men that were around a fire. They seemed pretty drunk, which gave me a better chance to get into the Viking cabin without being seen. There was a window open on the far side, just enough for me to squeeze in and clamber through. On curb appeal, this looked like an office or a storage room. Files and books, shelved, lined on the walls, with a computer in the center. I ran my flashlight along the files, and I began to snoop. These files were organized into batches, all grouped by dates. I grabbed one, and flickered through it. There were hundreds of names listed, separated by dozens of the word unknown. I stopped on one page, and read across name, unknown, gender, male, age, 40 to 60. Then the next category turned my stomach. Parts extracted, and then it began to list the organs. Liver, heart, kidneys, eyes. The list of these names were endless. Every file had a signed approval page at the beginning. It looked very official. I began to question what I stumbled into, and I just sat on the floor in disbelief, asking myself, am I, am I a part of some twisted farm that specialized in human livestock? I had to see what was in the barns. At this point, there was no turning back. I couldn't just take these books as proof. I shakily made my way back through the window and closed it exactly how I found it. I did take some pictures of what I did find. As I was outside, I saw one of the big barns, and I told myself, this is the main target, I need to see what's inside here. I slowly made my way, evading all the floodlights that were around me. I got to the first barn, and I took a deep breath. I needed all the strength I could possibly squeeze up in order to get through what I'm about to see. I looked through the panels of the big farm to try to see what was inside, but nothing but darkness had met my eye. I shined my flashlight through, and I saw machinery. Like I said, I've worked with machinery before, and it's not really much I can draw a conclusion from. So I needed to see more. I made my way around the other side of the barn, and there was a door that was open. I walked inside, and I was suddenly hit with a stench. I've never smelled something like that before, but it was dark inside the barn, so I used the flashlight to navigate through the barn. I quickly realized the machinery had bloodstains on it. There were multiple metal tables with medical instruments scattered along the wall. There was a large door at the end, and it was marked Chiller. Before proceeding, I used the flashlight to check my surroundings, because I didn't want to be like the character in a horror movie where somebody creeps up behind you. The coast was clear, so I proceeded to walk past the generator into the room. The stench of what I smelled earlier grew twice as worse. I saw five large metal pens that were spaced out throughout this barn. Each of these pens housed between 10 and 15 people, all of which were in and out of a state of consciousness. It looked like they were being experimented on. 
It's a lot easier for me to talk about now rather than when it had happened. I was frozen in shock for two to three minutes just looking at these people. After seeing the people, the bloody machinery, the medical tools, and the files, I understood what I got myself into, and I began to get very paranoid and anxious. I walked away back towards outside to get some fresh air so my brain could fully process what I just saw. I pulled my phone out to call the police, and right before I could, I lost my footing while I was walking outside. I slipped in a puddle that I didn't see. I knew that I made a lot of noise because the men by the fire had began to run towards me. I quickly ran back where I came from towards the fence opening, hoping that the darkness would cloak my movement. More floodlights began to turn on as I got closer and closer to the fence opening. I made my way through the fence opening and I heard the men behind me shouting, followed by three shots. I ran as fast as I could down to the trail, back to my car. It was the longest run I could have ever imagined. I get in my car. I do a body check to make sure I hadn't gotten hit. My leg was cut because of the fall, but I drove away as fast as I could. As I was thinking of what I just escaped, the adrenaline was just keeping me going. I didn't even bother going back home, I just drove off that property and I got on the interstate and just drove and drove. I realized that I left my phone there when I fell because I was in such a rush to run because of all the noise I made when I fell. All of the evidence I had was on the phone. I thought about that and I pulled over and just thought about what my next steps would be. Fast forward to today. I'm over 1200 miles away now and people need to understand that these places exist. And one was being ran right underneath my nose. I don't know what's next for me, but I left everything behind and I am never going back ever again. And one more thing, you do not wanna make it on the list.